April 5th, 2016. This is an idyllic Southern California spring day. As I'm walking out to take the kitchen garbage out, I turn around the corner and pass a big white windowless van. All of a sudden the door swings open and this tall uniformed guy steps out and he has a piece of paper in his hands and he says, are you David Delayden? And he says, I'm with the California Department of Justice. We have a search warrant for your home and he hands me the warrant. And I think to myself, oh gosh, you know, what, what's going to happen next? So about five or six California DOJ agents started stomping through my apartment. The other five of them standing on the lawn outside. Some of them were armed with AR-15s. Some of them had canine dogs with them. They had come for me. In 2013, uh, I uh, began and orchestrated uh, an almost three-year-long, very in-depth, comprehensive investigative journalism study about the harvesting and trafficking of body parts from late-term abortions. There's multiple violations and multiple issues that you very quickly start to learn about when you look into it. There's the basic problem of selling body parts where you're basically creating a system, creating transactions, creating business relationships that incentivize the objectification and the destruction of human beings in order to keep the business going. So for about 30 months we went undercover with the explicit purpose of partnering with some of the biggest Planned Parenthood abortion clinics in the country to send their technicians in harvest body parts from the abortions that were being done that day, and then package up the parts and ship them off to different customers all around the country, sometimes around the world. In July of 2015, we began to release the undercover video series. I had been hoping that this was something that would, you know, that would maybe generate 100,000 views or something. Instead, what happened was even bigger than I could have imagined. Within uh, less than a week, we had close to three million views on YouTube of the first video and multiple congressional committees announcing that they were launching federal investigations of Planned Parenthood's involvement in fetal trafficking um, and fetal experimentation. The truth got out there and the words of Planned Parenthood's own leadership describing their organization's participation in these activities went viral and was being publicized for the whole world to see. Looking back on it from the information that we know now, you know, I now know what was going on was that Kamala Harris, at the explicit instruction of Planned Parenthood, had targeted me and me alone among all undercover video news gatherers in the state of California to enforce the California video recording law against me and to punish me for speaking the truth about her powerful campaign donors at Planned Parenthood. What we've come to learn in the years since, just two weeks before serving the search warrant on my home, Kamala Harris had a secret meeting in Los Angeles with several top-level executives of Planned Parenthood in California. We then found out from the California DOJ investigator reports that Planned Parenthood's top lawyer in California had specifically instructed the California DOJ agents that Planned Parenthood wanted the video equipment and the computers that I was using to publish the videos to be seized in order to shut me up, in order to prevent me from continuing to publish the truth about Planned Parenthood's involvement in fetal trafficking, and in order to punish me for speaking out with a message that was disfavored by Planned Parenthood and by Kamala Harris in the state of California. I think what people have to understand about organizations like Planned Parenthood and about their political backers like Kamala Harris is that they're shameless and they will do whatever they have to do in order to promote their agenda. They'll say whatever they have to say, and they are not afraid to use every bit of power at their disposal to force their agenda through. Kamala Harris is the single greatest threat to First Amendment civil liberties that our country has ever seen. If Kamala Harris is elected to be a heartbeat away from the highest office in the United States of America, you will have someone in the White House who has a radical contempt and disrespect for First Amendment civil liberties, someone who believes that she's entitled to use the powers of her office in order to punish the viewpoints of citizens who disagree with her.